how to manage the transition from the old ways of doing business to the new? Have so you I, given it any thought, like both yeah. on, on a micro level as well as the policy? I have. So I level? think um, whenever, whenever you get, I mean, one of these big, big kind of tectonic changes, um, you first of all have to try and not to deny it and, and, and not stick to the old system. Um, you know, it's a bit like getting, I, I'm, I'm not old yet, but I'm sure it's a bit like getting old. You can't run as fast as you used to. Um, so you just have to accept that, that, you know, that period has passed. And, and then there's, there's usually a period of say five or 10 years of that looks quite chaotic and, and new things are being formed. Um, and you just have to accept that we go through that for the next five or 10 years. Um, and, and I think, maybe say two more things. One, the world we're going into is a kind of a multipolar world dominated by three large regions who will do things increasingly differently. Russia, um, sorry, China, Europe, and America. Mm -hmm. um, and also I think a lot of the institutions of the world, World Trade Organization, World Health Organization, IMF, um, either need to be changed radically or need to be just to be pared down and, and new institutions allowed to to creep up because you just clear that they're they're not doing it's a bit like driving a car from uh the 1990s it'll still go on the road but it's not as nice or as fast as other cars it doesn't work as well in one of the interviews i saw online you've mentioned we're sort of heading slowly into uh, into some new ways of doing business but for now, when we go back to our desks at work, we're still doing the old thing. <laughs> um, yeah. How do you see th this kind of a transition? So that, that's true. And I mean, the obvious tension is the whole thing of working from home, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think we, our lives will change. And one way they'll change for the better is in healthcare. People will be more aware of sanitation, uh, of their health, of their fitness, maybe, and maybe of their mental fitness as well, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also think that people, sh in many countries, people will, will, I hope, reflect on the state and the government, what the state is there for. And mm -hmm. in most cases, certainly in Europe, the state has helped people. It's been a, um, it's been a positive factor. Um, and, and then I think, you know, companies have to change because lots of companies still operate in very old efficient ways uh, they want to control people um, so i think workers will have a lot more freedom which is good for the way you work I i'm not sure if it's going to be good for their income because a more atomized kind of workforce if anything you know gross wages will actually might might fall as, as a result of that what about the policy making uh, side of, 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 of these tectonic changes? You have so, mentioned uh, central banks having yeah. new roles, etc. So I think there's a few things going on. I think generally speaking, policymakers have reacted really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, they did in a month what took two years, 10 years ago. Um, I think most governments are still in kind of emergency mode. And they're not really thinking about, you know, they're thinking more about the next two months than the next two or 10 years in terms of where growth is going to be. Yeah. Um, and I also think then the big factor are central banks who, I mean, I, I disagree with how aggressive central banks have been for the last 10 years in terms of using their balance sheets. And then they've gone and doubled that. And I think it, 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 you know, it clearly creates kind of recklessness and risk-taking in markets. It means debt levels are so high, asset prices are high. So there, there'll be a, a quid pro quo for all this in the future and that you know, young people trying to build up pensions or people trying to save will be at a disadvantage. Um, and, and many countries are now massively indebted as a result of this. Do you see inflation picking up as the next way of taxing people? Yeah, so I, I don't think, um, I mean, I, I don't think inflation is going to pick up because mm -hmm. I, I don't think that people are really ready to pay more money for, you know, a loaf of bread or whatever. And, and in my view, inflation is not rising prices, it's 
people are, are prepared to pay higher prices and they have higher wages as well. Mm -hmm. And the last 10 years, we've seen, you know, a period of steady recovery, lots of monetary support, no inflation, very little wage growth. So uh, we, now we have massive unemployment. I'm not sure we're going to see that. What we will see, I think, is, is just continued uh, asset price inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of the monetary stimulus from central banks is clearly going into markets. Um, so it, it is misdirected in that sense. And that will create a problem because, you know, if financial market inflation rises and soft commodity prices rise or, you know, look at lumber prices, um, then people pay more for their goods. And if they're not getting wage increases, then they're worse off, right? Mm -hmm.